the glamour of a premiere in London's West End, when 5,000 fans flock to see the great comedian Charlie Chaplin arrive for the charity performance of his new film. Princess Margaret made a special point of congratulating Charlie, while the comedian in his turn introduced Claire Bloom, whose screen performance is said to rival that of the genius himself. What an incredible night that was. Charlie Chaplin and me, Claire Bloom, the star and director with his leading lady, at the premiere of his picture, Limelight. It is unbelievable to me, even now. I was a young, inexperienced actress in 1952 when I was chosen personally by Charlie Chaplin for his new picture. I'm also in the business. My name is Calvero. Perhaps you've heard of me. But you're not the great comedian. I was. However, we won't go into that. Charlie had been making movies for almost 40 years all those masterworks of simplicity. The Gold Rush, City Lights, and The Great Dictator. Not just starring Charlie Chaplin, but directed by this legendary man. From the moment I met Charlie, my life was changed forever. Here was a man who wanted to be in charge of everything on a movie set, and nobody enjoyed directing more than Charlie. He approached it with a singular devotion and had that rare ability to place himself somehow both in front of and behind the camera at the same time. He was never still for a moment. Pardon goes me. on tight. It certainly does. I beg your pardon. The dress goes on tight. <laughs> This dapper, delicate man with remarkable clear blue eyes. He was always moving, demonstrating a gesture here, setting a scene there. Charlie was an exacting director. Not because he expected you to produce wonders on your own, but because he expected you to follow without question his every instruction. He was always trying to make me aware of the nearness of the camera so that soon I would take it for granted. He directed very specifically. Say the line like this, lower your eyes, put your hand here. He gave me every inflection, every move. Oh, that's, that's got... To demonstrate, he would become my character, but younger, prettier, more feminine. Charlie was better than I could ever hope to be in the role. Willing, eager, and adoring, I gave myself over to his instructions and to him. But as I was to learn, sentiment never interfered with Charlie's work. In those days, it was hard for me to cry on cue, and I remember I dreaded filming one highly emotional scene. Right before shooting that scene, Charlie called me in to run lines. I went through the dialogue with no inflection, as he instructed. Charlie flew into a rage. But Mr. Chaplin, I thought you wanted just a technical run-through. There is no such thing as technical acting, he snapped, only bad acting. As I burst into tears in confusion, I was carefully and quickly maneuvered in front of the camera to a waiting crew. My tears flowed on cue. It doesn't matter. It's you I love. The heart and the mind. What an enigma. Limelight was dear to Charlie's heart, rooted in his past in London. The music halls, the boarding houses, the booking offices, the pubs were all landmarks from his impoverished childhood. Even the clothes that I wore were based on precise instructions from Charlie from memories of what his mother wore. As I got to know him better, he talked a lot about growing up in London. He talked about Hollywood, too, and about how the little tramp was born. One miraculous night at dinner, he performed the famous roll dance from the Gold Rush with two forks and two rolls. How had a moment so memorable come from something so simple. But that was the key to Charlie's work, both as a performer and a director. Simplicity. I realized that night in 1952, 
as I sat next to Charlie and watched Limelight for the first time, how clear it all was to him. He knew how every nuance of my performance would register on the movie screen. Nothing was left to chance. There was no such thing as chance. There was only his genius. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Claire Bloom. See The Great Dictator, Monday at 12 a.m., part of 31 Days of Oscar, only on Turner Classic Movies.